Good afternoon. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is good to be with all of you here today. There we go. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. It is good to be with you here today. On behalf of the family, we would like to say thank you for coming as we honor the life of Joel, who lived his life very well for 95 years. And today, as we come to honor and celebrate a life lived well, we also acknowledge that there is a hole left behind. And so today, we ask for the Lord to come be present in a special way and to work here in this moment to begin to feel as we honor Jim with his life and acknowledge his faith and worship our Lord and Savior together. So I invite you to hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man may come to the Father except me. And he also said that he who believes in me shall never die, and though he die, yet shall he live. I am the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Grace. Grace that is given so freely. For those of you who may not know, the definition of grace is receiving what we do not deserve. The salvation, eternal life, is that beautiful gift of grace. And our Lord has promised to all who believe. Jim believed. He had a deep faith. He had a quiet faith. He had a gentle faith. He had faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And so again, as we move through this time, I invite you to remember that this is not Jim. This is not your father. Your father-in-law, your grandfather, your brother. This is not him. He's very much alive. In fact, he's more alive today than you and I are. He is not a was. Don't talk about him in the past tense. He's an is. In fact, he's more of an is than you and I are. So how's that for Celebrate the life that we will see. Let us begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you through that through your son Jesus Christ we have life. We thank you for the promise of eternal life for all who believe and the knowledge that Jim believed and confessed in your son. Lord, we thank you for washing him in the blood of your son, rising him again into a new life. Today, Lord, would you please help us to worship and to see you, even in the difficult moments, and be able to pray. Father, I thank you for those that are gathered here to support and to love this family. Lord, may they see you in a special way as well, knowing that what they do here that they provides comfort and hope. Lord, we ask for your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to begin our Old Testament reading in Psalm 18. It's, we're going to begin with verses 1 through 6, and then 20 through 24. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. The sorrows of death will pass me, and the floods of the ungodly men may be afraid of the sorrows of hell come past me about. The snares of death within me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even unto his ears. And then verse 20, The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He had recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all of his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore have the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, and his eyesight. 
But the merciful, thou will, that will show thyself merciful. But the upright man, thou will show thyself upright. With the pure, thou will show thyself pure. And with the flock, poor, thou will show thyself poor. So, one of the passages I love in the New Testament is when Jesus is standing there with his disciples, and John the Baptist is in jail, he's in prison, and he is now beheaded by Herod and his wonderful wife. And John the Baptist's disciples are coming to tell Jesus. One of my problems with reading scriptures is you tend to read them very matter of fact. And the scripture says, and they came and told Jesus. Now, I don't think that they walked up quietly and said, excuse me, sir, but we need to tell you that John the Baptist has been killed. Oh, no. I think Jesus and his disciples heard the disciples a long way off, crying and yelling. And I think they were running. And they were coming to Jesus as hell. <laughs> well, what did Jesus do? Get Today, we're coming to Jesus to tell them about our loss, knowing that there is no God but our God. There is no one greater than Him, and He can heal our hearts. The great God we have, our fortress, our shield, our defender, in times of trouble, our God is there. So let's, let's celebrate. How good of a God we have. And let's go to him and tell him all of our troubles. And we're going to be listening to how great thou art. And if you want to sing along, we let you do so. This is your moment to worship God and to tell him all of his troubles. <laughs> Let's talk about the 
words in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the head, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war. Time difficult these moments of life <laughs> and, and seasons come and they go. I think we finally hit the season of summer, winter kept coming back. But each season of uh, the earth brings its own joys and its troubles. Each season of our life does the same. But make no mistake, there's always a beginning, there's an ending. We're going to read the obituary here. You have it in your program as well. Um, but we're going to take time to read it and just know that these few short words does not sum up the life of a man 95 years who lived well. They begin with one of my favorite quotes. How lucky am I to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. Winnie the Pooh was. James Wallace Shaw was born on May 20th, 1928 in the city of Detroit. He was the second child of Harold and Isabel Wallace Shaw. He was raised in Detroit along with his three siblings, Virginia, Harold, and Janet. He enjoyed a childhood in Detroit. <laughs> entering yo-yo contests at a local theater and raising homing pigeons he had brought at the Eastern Market. He often told the story of having to be careful who you bought pigeons from as some would sell birds that which would fly right back to the seller once released, resulting in a lost bird and money. This is Jim attended Cooley High School and above graduation took a local job. After a year of working, he decided he wanted more and enrolled at Michigan State University, known then as Michigan State College. I knew he was a good man. <laughs> well, at Michigan State, he went on a blind date with a young lady named Bonnie Bailey, a date which his brother had arranged. Apparently, his brother knew him well, as it was this date, which was the beginning of a life together for them, 
as they were married on May 16, 1953, and they enjoyed 69 years of marriage. Jim graduated from Michigan State, earning his degree in hotel and hospitality administration. Ultimately, he began a career with Ford Motor Company, working for World Headquarters in Dearborn, writing manufacturing standards and childhood retirement. After marriage, Jim and Bonnie settled in Detroit, raising three children, James, Kathleen, and David. Bonnie was an elementary teacher and returned to teaching when the family moved to Redford Township. Upon retirement, they returned to Bonnie's hometown in Latin. They built a home and enjoyed many years there, active in the community until health issues required a move to an assisted living facility in Zealand. An early childhood injury left Jim with a few feet. However, he never let that define him. In spite of, with the assistance and support of his brother Hal, he learned to run, ride a bike, drive a car and participate in pretty much anything he chose to do. Jim had a deep love for the outdoors. He enjoyed time spent on the family farm, golf, hunting, and fishing. What he enjoyed most was the camaraderie of those doing those activities accompanied with family and friends. He golfed several years with a friend in a gladden golf league. There were many season hunting trips throughout the years, as part of the family camp with the Dead Stream Swamp, spring fishing trips with family in Canada, where he was a cherished member of the Murphy Creek crew, waterfowl hunting trips each fall to North Dakota with family and friends, and in recent years being a member of the Nine Point Country Lodge. Jim was active with his church, New Beginning United Methodist Church, holding several leadership positions over the years. He especially enjoyed being part of the Methodist Men's Group and assisting with Second Saturday Suppers, a low-cost meal that served the community and the church, and all were welcome. Jim was a wonderful husband, father, and grandfather, and great-grandfather. He valued family and time spent with him. Of his many endearing character traits, his wit and sense of humor often brought joy to all who were fortunate enough to spend time with him. Jim and Bonnie built a cottage on Lake Michigan in New England where their family gathered and have continued together for many years. Excuse me. Especially enjoying the beautiful sunset over the Manitou Islands, fires on the beach, collecting the Paskey stones, watching storms roll across the lake, and watching his family grow. Jim so enjoyed children. There were several Easter egg hunts where he was, where he'd be seen wearing his funny ears and a fluffy tail. Tell me you a picture of that. <laughs> While hiding jelly beans around the yard. He along with Bonnie posted peasants weeping glad where they took all the grandchildren for a week of fun, including float trips down the river, cut cut off trips to the county fair, and yo-yo lessons and ice cream from the local shops. Jim was preceded in that by his wife, Bonnie, parents, Harold and Isabel, his sister, Virginia, his brothers-in-law, Gene Hibbert, Jack Jensen, and Ellis Phillips. He is survived by his children, James and Deborah Shaw, Kathleen and Kevin Pilarso. Okay, thank you, Melissa, well, okay, sorry. Can you go do it? David and Linda Shaw, grandchildren Shannon and Christopher Gearhart, Kelly and Justin Cohen, Keller Shaw, Caitlin Pierce Butt, Christopher Shaw and Danny Ward, and Cameron and Nathan Matt, and great grandchildren Brian and Graham Gearhart, James and Jacqueline Cohen, Keegan Shaw, Clyde Buett, oh, Oliver Mack, and a great granddaughter, Dumont. He is also survived by his brother Harold and Marilyn Shaw, sister Janet Hibber, his sister in law Emma Jean Phillips, and sister in law Darlene J. Charles of Lewin, as well as many nieces and nephews. About passing, one of the resounding words the family heard from family and friends expressing their condolences was Jim's kindness. As memorial, family suggesting the acts of kindness, contributions to the charity of your choice by the Gladwin Office of Aging, as they provided wonderful support to his 
for Bonnie's final years. Jim's family would especially like to thank the incredible staff at the Royal Atrium and New Zealand for the wonderful care they provided to both Bonnie and Jim during their final chapter. <coughs> Not enough. Not enough. So I have a job for all of us. Today, after the service, as the family meets at Highland Cemetery for a moment at the gravesite, they've asked that you proceed them to Rivertown Inn for a meal. And today, during that meal, and in the weeks and months and years to come, tell the stories of Jim and Bonnie. That's what makes the difference. That sweet little baby that's coming in August needs to hear about the great grandfather, the great grandmother that is still faith in the family. Tell the funny stories. I know Jim, I know he didn't do it all right. I know there's some good stories in there. Show the pictures of the bunny cat. Tell about the love. Tell about the mistakes and the lessons learned. Oh. In the talking, in the retelling, not only will you find comfort, but Jim's life will continue to reflect and make a difference. His son has asked to come and share for a moment. Get up, <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Is that box of <laughs> When mom passed, I got up and read the definition of a mother from the dictionary. It was disappointing. It said a female parent. Look up dad. It said a male parent. We all know there's so much more. We all know that there's not enough words to fully explain the importance of moms and dads in our lives. We do know what made our dad extra special. Family. Friends, co workers, acquaintances, and many more. Many of you are here today with us. Many that supported mom, dad, and our family as well. Many are watching today on live stream. Each played an important part in dad's life, and for that, our family will be forever grateful. On behalf of our family, I want to take this opportunity to thank Pastor Cook as well. Your message uh, that we're hearing today, the support of our family, helping us celebrate dad's life. My sister and I would also like to thank Brother David. They gave Dad their most precious gift, their time as they served as caregivers to both Mom and Dad over the last year and a half. Being a caregiver often requires putting the needs of others before your own. This translates to last minute schedule changes, frequent trips to provide support, trips to doctor's appointments, and word on the street is a few phone calls. <laughs> Ask us later about that. <laughs> Dave, Linda, you did this with grace, not because you had to, because that is the truth. <laughs> One last story. Dad absolutely loved the outdoors, many times in the outdoors, be it uh, deer hunting with friends, Dead Street Swamp, be it uh, with his friends at the Nine Point Club. Uh, and it, it wasn't the Speaking of game, it was the time spent with friends and family that he cherished the most. And a big part of that was our grandfather, Virgil Bailey, kind of introduced him to honey and honey in the dead stream swamp. Grandpa Bailey was in his last few days. Dad met with him at the hospital. And afterwards, I asked Dad, I said, what do you say to him? Say to him, and Dad shared with me, he said, I asked him, I asked him to find us another dead stream. Yeah, I hope you find the joy and peace while spending time with friends and family in those kids. Now, Mom, I'm pretty sure her vision of eternity is not that true strong. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, but, but the peace and joy is. Yes. And the two of them are going to have to work that out. So over the next few weeks, you will put a thunder in the sky. Just <laughs> saying. On behalf of the family, I just want to thank all of you, not just for being here today, but the kind words, the notes, and the tremendous support you've provided, and we'll continue to bring it to the
Kathy has written the state of the national act. It's never easy to say goodbye to your parents. My brothers are to know that you well, as this is our second time in less than six months. Dads are special people. Our dad is special to us in some unique ways. Take a minute to think about your dad. Does he entertain you with stories of his childhood involving chicken foot and not running Canadian officials on bike saying rumor stories? Does he amaze you by the fact that there wasn't any food served that he didn't like? <laughs> Does your dad inspire you by ice skating, cross country, skiing, hunting? and riding a bike with one leg that permanently put it bend. We all have stories of our family, but our dad constantly provided us with funny anecdotes, which we didn't see coming. Like, like Zoomy after his heart valve replacement surgery with a bovine valve. Does your dad love animals? Our dad loved Jenny the Beetle enough to be, to be our first and only dog to live in the house. Daily fed barn cats. He named Rocky and Fluffy and washed our dogs in cold lake Michigan after they rolled in dead fish before getting in the car to head home from the cottage. Dads love their families, and our dad did too. He did special things for all of us, like spending one yellow rose each birthday for over 60 years, spending time hunting and fishing with the boys, and taking such good care of mom. Is your dad in his community? Dad volunteered at the church, attending local basketball games, spent time with the town coffee group, supported local causes, had a lot of gas station saving in hand, delivering to his car of the Detroit Free Press each morning. And he yearly decorated with them the farm buildings for the holidays. We are sure that Jim Shaw was not the only dad that did these things, but to us, he is and will continue to be amazing. It's hard to say goodbye to a parent, whether it's your dad or somebody else's dad. One of the things that I love about a Christian family is that we do this together. And so, hmm, let's just take a moment. And let's do this for the family. One of my favorite stories in the Bible comes from the book of Nehemiah. Uh, Nehemiah, they've been taken into captivity. Jerusalem had been destroyed. The wall going around it. And word had reached Nehemiah about this wall. When there's no city wall, there's no protection back then because the enemies would come in and raid and un un infringed upon. And so Nehemiah comes and they begin to rebuild the wall. And the enemies didn't like it. And so as Nehemiah and his, his Workers were standing on the wall, building the hole. They were being attacked. And Nehemiah put men with sword and shield to protect the workers and to defend them from the enemy and the gaps in the wall. And it's only because of those soldiers that that wall was able to be built. Today, it is only because of us that this family is able to stay. So, I invite you, let's take a moment. And let's pray for this family. Heavenly Father, today, when it is hard, when the storms are blown, and as much as we know the end and we rejoice in the victory, we confess that the winds are so strong. And it's so hard. And so, Father, would you please, would you please surround this family? May they feel the warmth and light of your love upon them with the knowledge. And those things are welcome with you. Oh, would you help them? Not just today, but in all those moments to come when they need to pick up the phone and talk to their dad. May they pick up their prayer line, talk to their heavenly spot. Would you help them? Or would you empower my brothers and sisters that are gathered here today to be support for us, to pray for them, to encourage them, to call them up and to walk with them through the good and the hard times. We thank you, Lord. 
And you're the God who speaks. You are the God who comes running. Would you please come running now and help this man? In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thessalonians chapter 4, verse, verses 13 through 18, read this. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that he, we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now comfort one another with these words. That's good stuff. Do you know what that means? That means we're going to learn how to fly. We're going to live again. Well, one of the stories that the family told me was when Jim and his wife went into the nursing home and he never fully understood that he wasn't going back to his earth. It's hard, isn't it? Home has such precious meaning to us. But think back to your own childhood home. That's, that's really good memories, isn't it? The home that you live in now. Uh, you like your home, I hope. Uh, I have very fond memories of my bed that I wouldn't see again. I like pictures on the wall, and there's that one chair that I want. And when I think back to my childhood, oh, I can see my dad uh, working in the garden and mom in the kitchen. Oh, this is precious. And Jim kept saying, he was just visiting. He wanted to go home. He was just visiting. Knowing Jim, he was so gentle to the end. And I don't see him throwing a temper tantrum about going home. But it's still there. It's long. It doesn't matter how your mind begins to betray you with the disease of Alzheimer's and dementia. Some things remain true. The goal of home. Well, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible comes in Hebrews chapter 11. It's the Hall of Fame. It talks about the heroes of the faith. By faith, these people did these things. And that's exciting stuff because it gives us encouragement when things are difficult. Today, I want us to look at the hero of the faith, <laughs> the Jim story, reminding you of. Hebrews chapter 11, beginning in verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should not receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. And by faith, he traveled in the land of promise as a stranger in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heir, heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, Whose builder and maker is God. They dwelt in tabernacles, sounds kind of good, right? Yeah, that's King James language. They dwelt in tents. And it wasn't the kind of tents we have today. These were not really comfortable places. And yet Abraham dwelt there, and he never once said, This is it. He was looking for a city, for a home. This foundation was built by God. He wanted to go home. I know it's difficult. I know the winds blow. And it is hard because we want things to stay the same. Change is difficult. And it doesn't matter that your precious God will live to be 95. 95 is still too short. Isn't it? I know it's hard. 
but I also know that Jim is alive. Not because Jim was good. Not because he was a sweet and kind man or because he volunteered or because he worked with United Methodist <laughs> Men or he sang in the choir or he loved all kids. All of that is good stuff, but that is not why your father is alive. Your father is alive simply because he believes in Jesus Christ. Because the truth of it is, none of us are good enough for heaven. But you have believed in someone better than him. And he accepted the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. And it is by faith he is saved, not of works. So today, what Jim only hoped for, what Jim could only dream about, he now knows in his fullness. He's in the city whose foundation only God created. He sees with eyes of the kingdom of God, the throne, that crystal river, that lake that flows from the throne of God. He's there. He sees it. And he's walking the streets of glory. <laughs> As living his best life. We have hope today that we too can join him. I think one of the saddest things in life is when we have to say goodbye to our loved ones. Knowing that's not the case here today. I want to teach you a phrase that comes from my tribe. I can check us off so we don't have a word for goodbye because goodbye is coming. <laughs> so we say this Chapisa la cho. You say it with me? Chapisa la cho. And it means this I'll be seeing you. That's what we can say. Because we can see Jim again. We know where he is. And Jesus told his disciples, He says, I go to prepare a place for you, and you know where I'm going. And Philip, bless his heart, said, Excuse me, I don't know where you're going. So how can I get there? And Jesus said, You know me, you know the Father. You know the Father, you know the way. <laughs> I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except me. Jim, the way. His children, go the way. And I pray you do as well. Goodbyes are not easy. I don't think they should be. But this is a goodbye. And I'll see you later. Doesn't mean that doesn't hurt. But we don't grieve like those who have no hope. Because we have the assurance of our Lord Jesus Christ. One of the things I have learned is bumps and bruises come our way in life. And you're sitting there thinking, that's their bump and bruise. But I've also learned that other people's bumps and bruises are painful. So today, my prayer is for all of you that as you walk your life journey, that you understand that God is there with you. And no matter the bump and bruise that you come across, whether it is yours or whether it's someone else's that's rocking your world, you understand this. God loves you passionately. He has a purpose and he has a plan for your life. Sing it. And as the storm winds blow, sing loudly the praises of the one who loves you, who saves your soul. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of our salvation. And we thank you that this is not goodbye. And I'll see you later. And so, in the midst of the ugliness, when Satan thinks that he has won, that he has stolen another one from us, Father, in the midst of that lie from Satan, we will stand and praise your name. We will stand and glorify you because of your great love that we do not deserve. We thank you, Lord, for loving us and our messiness. 
and receiving your soul. Today, we give back to you your son, which belongs only to you, taking you for a life that was given to us for a short time to shape and mold us. Help us, Lord, in our grief to be the church you called us to be, a life that's good. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Before we sing the blessed assurance, I would like to give you some instructions. After the service, you are invited to go to River County. Hearing the song, the final song, Blessed Assurance, we're going to ask you to go home to come. And the full doors take Jim to his final resting place. We're going to ask for the family to follow. It is for the family. So the rest of you, we invite you to go to River Town Bend and we will join you shortly. Let us see. Let's go short. Father, we thank you for this time that we've had here together. As my brothers and sisters leave this place, may you go before them, keep them the same, touch their hearts, and may your fellowship time that is to follow be filled with laughter and love and food for the Calvary's soul. Lord, we ask that you be present. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If there are masks provided in the back, we need a nap. And I look forward to seeing you. This ends the service. <laughs> yeah.